ओम नमो भगवते रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो थ्री चैप्टर वन इंटाइटल क्वेश्चन बाय विदुरा टेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी सेवन नो पमास अस्ते सुखम अंग शोरी सस्वीनम पितृवादी परन वो वार थापने कचित गुरुनाम भरमासुरिनो कचित गुरुनाम भरमासुरिनो पमास अस्ते सुकम अंगशोरी पमास अस्ते सुकम अंगशोरी योवाय सस्विनम पित्रिवाददाति योवाय सस्विनम पित्रिवाददाति वरन वदन योवार कचित कुरुनम भरमासुरिनो बामास अस्ते सुकम अंग शोरी युवाय सस्वीनम पित्रिवाददाति परन वदन यो वार थापने वेदर कुरु नम ऑफ दि कुरु परमा ग्रेटेस्ट सूरज वेल विश ना Pamaha, brother-in-law, saha, he, aste, is, sukam, happy, anga, o urva, shori, vasudeva, ya, one who, vai, certainly, sasvinam. Of the sisters, Pitriva, like a father, Tadati gives, Varan, everything desirable, Vadanya, munificent, Vara, wife, Tapanena, by pleasing. Translation per point by His Divine Grace, Sri Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki. Please tell me whether the best friend of the Kuru's, our brother-in-law Vasudev, is doing well. He is very munificent. He is like a father to his sisters, and he is always pleasing to his wives. Please repeat. Please tell me. Whether the best friend of the Kuru's, our brother-in-law Vasudev, is doing well. He is very munificent. He is like a father to his sisters, and he is always pleasing to his wives. Purport: Lord Krishna's father Vasudev had sixteen wives, and one of them. Named Poravi or Rohini, the mother of Baladev, was the sister of Vidura. Vasudev, therefore, was the husband of Vidura's sister, and thus they were brother-in-law. Vasudev's sister Kunti was the wife of Pandu, Vidura's elder brother, and in that sense also Vasudev was brother-in-law to Vidura. Kunti was younger than Vasudev, and it was the duty of the elder brother to treat younger sisters as daughters. 
Whenever anything was needed by Kunti, it was munificently delivered by Vasudev due to his great love for his younger sister. Vasudev never dissatisfied his wives and at the same time he supplied the objects desired by his sister. He had special attention for Kunti because she became a widow at an early age. While inquiring about Vasudev's welfare, Viduru remembered all about him and the family relationship. Translation. Please tell me whether the best friend of the Kurus, our brother-in-law Vasudev, is doing well. He is very munificent. He is like a father to his sisters and he is always pleasing to his wives. Om Agyanat Mandasya Gyananjala Savakaya Chakshumala Tamgena Tasma Shri Gurave Namaha Mukam Kurati Vajjalam Bhangam Langate Hegrim Yatkripa Tamaham Bande Shri Guram Nirtanam So Hare Krishna So uh, here the questions by Vidura are just, just beginning. So who can uh, who can think of some, of course uh, Vidura has unlimited good qualities, he's a pure devotee of Krishna. So here we can maybe think of um, some of the qualities of the Dura, who can think of some, some of the qualities or one of the qualities that's sort of exhibited here in these questions. So basically he starts with asking the, the verse prior to this one, he's asking of the welfare of Krishna and Balaram, Supreme Personality of Godhead who incarnated themselves at the request of Brahma. So he doesn't first ask about the, the, all the family members, he first asks about the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And it's interesting, Prabhupada points out in the last purport at the end, because the happiness of the family of the Lord's devotees depends on the happiness of the Lord, Vidura first of all inquired about the well-being of the Lord. So then he went on to ask about all the different uh, family members in the, in the Yadu dynasty, all the prominent family members. So this is the devotee's business that he doesn't um, first seek the welfare of, of others, but first he inquires to the welfare of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And first he's his first and foremost interest is pleasing the Supreme Personality of Godhead and glorifying the Supreme Lord. Of course, at the same time, glorifying Krishna, glorifying the Supreme Lord, one has to glorify his devotees at the same time and, uh, and see their, their good qualities because the, the devotees who have surrendered to the Supreme Lord, like all these devotees mentioned here, uh, they're to be regarded as good as the Supreme Personality of God in Himself. That we, in the morning, we sing that the spiritual master is, be, is to be honoured as much as the Supreme Personality of Godhead because He's the most confidential servitor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is accepted by all revealed scriptures and all authorities. Therefore, we offer our respectful obeisances under such a spiritual master. So all these great personalities like Vasudev, and then the list goes on, Prajumna, Arjuna, etc. Yudhisthira, so many other exalted personalities, they're all pure devotees of Krishna. So Krishna, he's never, he's never just by himself, he's always surrounded by his loving devotees. So Krishna has four qualities that supersede even all the different Vishnu incarnations. Who can name the four qualities? He's attracting all living entities by his flute playing. 
His beauty is exceptional, beyond compare. Two more. His uh, pastimes are super excellent, and he's always surrounded by loving devotees. <clears throat> so one of the uh, qualities of Badura that stood out here for me, and is standing out in these verses, is that he's always, uh, always thinking of others, all others, thinking of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna and Balaram, and thinking of all... Uh, Krishna and Balaram's wonderful, wonderful devotees listed here. And ultimately, the, the pure devotee like Vidura, he's thinking of all living entities, the welfare of all living entities. And uh, in Vidura's travelling and preaching and teaching, he's spreading Krishna consciousness, he's giving Krishna consciousness, giving Krishna consciousness uh, realizations, knowledge and realization to benefit all living entities. So here he's talking about Vasudev and who can remember how he glorifies uh, Vasudev in this verse. So Vasudev is Krishna's father. No, no um, ordinary personality, very highly exalted personality, Vasudev and Devaki, the original mother and father of Krishna. So who can remember some of the qualities that uh, Vidura highlights here. He's very caring for his sisters. Yeah. Yep. So he's like a father to his sisters. So he's pleasing to his wives. And one other, one other quality he lists here. It's very munificent. Very munificent. So like, what's another... Who can give another many of munificent... Generous, that's a good description. So Vasudev was a king, not an ordinary king. Like Shiva Prabhupada said, the kings in those days, in the Vedic times, were rajashis. They were not only rajas, kings, but rishis. They were saintly personalities, pure devotees at the same time. So they were completely competent to rule over the... Citizens, not only, like Prabhupada says, the prajas. The prajas is not just the human beings, but all living entities are the citizens of the state, citizens under the um, protection of the king. So the king like Vasudev and other such kings like Maharaj Yudhisthira, Maharaj Parikshit, they were Raj, 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 Rajashis because they uh, were expert at perfectly looking to the needs of all living beings with their, their material and spiritual needs. And ultimately they were able to uplift the whole society, all living entities, to a platform of Krishna consciousness so that they could perfect their lives and go back home, back to the spiritual world and um, rekindle their pure love for Krishna. So we see that in... in these pastimes in the, when the Vedic culture was prominent at this time as when such kings like Vasudev, Maharaj Yudhisthira, Maharaj um, Parikshit and so many others were ruling. Society was, uh, was perfect. The whole society was Krishna conscious. Even the animals were Krishna conscious. Even the animals were engaged in service to Krishna. <clears throat> and it was said that there was practically no uh, anomalies in, in society, even the weather, even it only rained at night time, the weather was perfect. So this is the, uh, the benefit of Krishna consciousness when we have such uh, pure devotees in society, when Krishna consciousness is very prevalent, then the whole society can become very uh, peaceful and prosperous and spiritually advanced. But the opposite in Kali Yuga is that because there's no worship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna, there's no glorification of the Lord, there's no... Uh, everyone is basically 99% materialistic and engaged in sinful activities, then we see so many anomalies in human society and you only have to walk out the door. 
down to Mwilumba or the Gold Coast and see so many anomalies of Kali Yuga. Practically everyone is addicted to meat eating, intoxication, gambling, illicit sex, so much crime, war, pestilence, drought, floods, etc. But Srila Prabhupada said the greatest, uh, the greatest anomaly, the greatest fault of Kali Yuga is, is that uh, so-called leaders uh, uh, have taken the posts of, of leaders and they're falsely advertising themselves as leaders when they're not qualified. This is like the greatest fault of Kali Yuga. Nati Svatam Gatima Vishnum Donasya Yaya Bihi Atamani Na that simply the, um, the blind leaders are leading their blind followers and they all, in, all fall into the ditch of ignorance because they do not understand that the goal of life is to become a Krishna conscious and go back home, back to the spiritual world. <clears throat> so therefore, that, no, they're, they're posing as very big leaders, politicians, prime ministers, kings, queens, but they do not even know who they are. They have no understanding that they're not this body or the mind or the senses. They have no understanding of their eternal relationship with Krishna and the real business of the human being to become self-realized, to become Krishna conscious, to be fully engaged in Krishna's service. Whereas we see with the wonderful example of personalities like Vidura and Vasudev listed here, they were fully Krishna conscious with so many uh, wonderful qualities. A devotee is like an ocean of unlimited qualities. Simply because he has devotion to Krishna, because he has love for Krishna, he has all the good qualities of the, the demigods. In the Bhagavatam it states this, Yasyasti Bhakti Bhagavati Yakinchina Savai Gunas Tatra Samasate Sarah Harava Bhaktasa Mahu Matu Harava Bhaktasa Someone help me there. Manuradet Manuradet Yanasati Dava Tobi here. That one who has unflinching devotion to the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna, all the good qualities of the Supreme Lord and the demigods are invested in such a person. But one who has no devotion to Krishna, he has no good qualities because he's always hovering on the platform of uh, material existence, on, on the mental platform. So Vidura, here we're, we're hearing questions, so many questions by Vidura. So he was no ordinary personality, he was, uh, he's actually Yamaraj, he's actually an incarnation of Yamaraj. And Yamaraj is one of the knowers of religious principles, as also listed in the sixth canto, Svayamu Narada Sambhu Komara Kapilo Manu, Pralado Janako Bhishmo, Bali Vayasaki Vayam. Yamaraj shed this 12 great personalities who perfectly know religious principles. <clears throat> who can list them, give their names? Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma, first one. Narayan Mani. Shiva. Lord Shiva. Komara Kapalu Manu. Komara, the four Kamaras. Kapalu, Kapalu Muni. Manu. Um, Kormara Kaplan Manu, what's the, uh, Prahlad Maharaj, Bali Maharaj, Bhishma Dev, uh, Sukadev Goswami, and Yamaraj. Do we miss any? So, so Yamaraj is here, he, as we know the story, has been recited before, he's incarnated as Vidura. So this is why, even though his Bidura was born from a Sudrani mother, uh, he's still a highly learned personality and a greatly exalted devotee. Of course, his mother, even though she was a Sudrani, she's no exalted. She's no ordinary personality either. She's you no know, Krishna. When he comes to this world, he brings all his associates directly from the spiritual world. 
so all these personalities, like even Prabhupada says in Krishna's time, even the prostitutes were, were great devotees of Krishna. <clears throat> so all these personalities, whether whatever Vana or Ashram they're in, they're all eternal associates of the Supreme Lord Himself. So Vidura, Vidura was, um, as we see by his his teaching, his instructions to his brother, his blind brother, Dhritarashtra, who was blind by birth and also spiritually blind, his teachings, his instructions to his elder brother, he always, was always giving expert advice. So he was like an expert advisor, a great politician, a great devotee. Yet here we see he's asking uh, questions. He's asking questions from Uddhava. So this is the uh, one of the another quality of a very advanced devotee like Vidura that they're always they're always uh, seeking out the association of highly exalted souls themselves. They're always asking questions on the platform of Krishna consciousness. Not that they're thinking now I'm I've achieved perfection of life. Now I'm a pure devotee. I don't need anyone's help anymore. So the pure devotees like Vidura, they're always thinking that, you know, I'm so unqualified and there's so many more people qualified than myself. So here we see, even though he knows everything, he completely is, knows religious principles, he understands fully the transcendental nature of Krishna's name, form, qualities, pastimes. He's very intimate associate of the Lord, but still he's asking so many questions from another exalted personality, Uddhava. And it was said that Uddhava, he, uh, he looked just like Krishna, right? <clears throat> there was that story where the, the gopis, um, they mistook, once they mistook Uddhava to be Krishna, because he looks almost exactly the same. And so these questions are very, um, very pertinent, very meaningful, and uh, coming from the heart of a pure devotee like Vidura, asking about the welfare of so many exalted, other exalted personalities. So this is a devotee's business. He's always thinking of the welfare of others thinking of the welfare of the devotees, thinking of the welfare of Krishna, thinking of the welfare of all living entities in general. He's always trying to enthuse others in their Krishna consciousness, to give Krishna consciousness to others, to preach Krishna consciousness, to uplift those who are fallen away from Krishna consciousness, like the Majjama Adhikari, the Kanishta, he only thinks of himself and <clears throat> maybe he's thinking of the deity, but he doesn't have regard even for the devotees, what to speak of people in general. But the Majjama Adhikari, Ishvare Tadahini Shubhala Shesha Du Satsucha Prema Maitri Kripo Peksha Yakaroti Sa Majjama. The Majjama Adhikari, he uh, worships Krishna as his highest object of love and devotion. He is, uh, makes friends with the devotees. He's merciful to the innocent and he avoids those who are envious by nature. So, but even the devotee, in, even avoiding those who are envious by nature, uh, he still tries to give them Christian consciousness. Like sometimes in our preaching, right? We go out and do book distribution and you can't tell just by looking at people whether they're going to be interested in Krishna consciousness or not. Sometimes, sometimes you look at people and you think, oh, they're really, they're really out of it. You know, they're, he's controlled by his wife or his nose is too big or he's too ugly or he's too old. But then you stop them and they're really interested in Krishna consciousness. And other people, they look like, they look like, you know, they'd be really interested in Krishna consciousness. They look friendly. 
they look young and healthy, but you stop them and they, you know, they're completely disinterested. But still, devotee tries to give even the the envious Krishna consciousness, giving them prasadam or the holy name Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <coughs> so this uh, Yuga Dham, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, is the process in which even the most fallen can be uplifted to the topmost platform of becoming a pure devotee of the Lord. Any of us, we've all come from the most fallen state in Kali Yuga. <clears throat> uh, but still, by this process of Krishna consciousness, by hearing this philosophy, by hearing about the pastimes of the Lord and His pure devotees, by hearing the wonderful qualities of the Lord and His many devotees, by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, by taking regular darshan of the deities, doing service for the deities, by taking prasadam, hearing, um, coming to classes, coming to the temple programs, all these wonderful activities are very, very powerful. And any of us can be uplifted, even from the most fallen state, to a, a pure devotee of the Lord. So, not that we can imitate uh, Vidura, personalities like Vidura or Vasudev, but we can follow in their footsteps. Because one can't imitate Vasudev having so many wives, 16 wives. Prabhupada said in those days polygamy was it's normal, it's a normal creation by Krishna. That He says generally that in any society there's always more men born than girls. So if polygamy is not allowed then... Sorry? Oh, it's the other way around. It's always more girls born than boys. Right, so... So if that's why this system was there, because so that every woman got a husband. Otherwise, we see in modern day society, so many women don't get a husband because there's um, less men. But of course, at the same time, Prabhupada said you have to follow the law of the land because in these countries polygamy is not allowed, it's illegal, then Prabhupada says we have to at the same time follow the law of the land. <clears throat> so, uh, So back to this, uh, one of these main points here, that how Vidura is taking instruction, advice from Uddhava. This is... Um, this is the Vedic culture. That every, every person had a, had a spiritual master. It's considered that if you don't have a spiritual master, then your future is, is unknown. So even, the, even Krishna set the example himself. He had, he had a spiritual master, Sandipani Muni. <clears throat> so what to speak of uh, all of us? And we see all through the Bhagavatam, all these conversations, so many question and answer discussions. There's so many exalted personalities like Vidura, who even though they're pure devotees, and they have you know, complete love for Krishna and their life is perfect, they're still taking this humble position that they need to constantly seek out the uh, association and instruction from self-realized souls. So this is our real business. When we come to a holy place, is to seek out the uh, association and instruction of the pure devotees of the Lord. Just like in the Bhagavatam it says uh, uh, that verse that states that one, one who accepts his body, bodily bag of mucus bile and air to be himself. How does that verse start? Yashatma buddhi kunapi tri dadukhe sadi kalab tradishu koma it koma koma it di yatithi buddhi saladena ka chit. Janesh Fabi Geshusa Eva Gokana. 
One who takes his bodily bag of mucus, bile and air to be himself, who has an affinity for an intimate relationship with his mundane relations, who uh, takes his place of birth as worshipable, or goes to a holy place, but he only goes there for bathing in the holy rivers, but he doesn't seek out the association and guidance of the self-realized souls is considered sa like a cow or an ass. Even the cows and asses bathe in the holy rivers, right? But you don't see them coming to the temple, to Mayapur or Vrindavan, to sit down and hear the Bhagavatam and ask relevant questions. <coughs> So whereas the, no, no, another one of the uh, faults of Kali Yuga is that every, no one wants to accept any authority. People have no respect for uh, uh, elders or leaders. Of course, most people aren't qualified to give leadership or instruction in Kali Yuga. The mothers and fathers and the politicians and the school teachers, they're not qualified. Uh, the, in the Bhagavatam it states that one should not become a father, mother, spiritual master, worshipable demigod unless one can deliver his dependence from the ocean of birth and death. But even, uh, even most people don't have any, they don't have any um, respect even in those who do have knowledge and realisation. How much respect do we see that people in general are giving to Krishna conscious leaders in, in the world, Krishna conscious devotees? People don't care. People don't, you know, they don't care uh, about their activities, committing so many sinful activities. They're not caring for the consequences, not caring. They're thinking there's no reaction, there's no punishment. But, uh, According to the, you know, according to the Bhagavatam, the Bhagavad Gita, every action has a reaction. You cannot even kill an ant and not and not pay for it. As you know, the story of Vidura. He um, he was Yamaraj, and he was cursed because he uh, because uh, what was the name of the Muni again? The Muni who was. Uh, who gave pain to the ant? Oh, Mandavya. Mandavya. Mandavya Muni. So he was to be punished to death because he, as a young boy, he was giving pain with a stick, poking a stick into a little ant. So then he was to be put on, uh, put on the, um, the swords, killed that way. But he was saved at the last moment by the, by the king. But he was saying to Yamaraj, you know, how are you punishing me for such an insignificant thing I did and I was just a childish little boy. But the laws of nature are very stringent and strict. <clears throat> so with a devotee like Vidura, we see that all his actions are completely sinless and completely transcendental and always fully engaged in Krishna's service 24 hours a day. So this is our business also. We have to act in such a way that we're always 24 hours a day Krishna conscious. We're always uh, trying to act on the transcendental platform free from the three modes of material nature. And we're always uh, free from any sinful activity. And as Srila Prabhupada said, if you just follow these programs, if you just chant at least 16 attentive rounds every day, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra on our beads, and we uh, remain free from all these, the four major sinful activities, and we attend the temple programs, then we will become perfect and go back home, back to Godhead. It's a simple, very simple process. But Srila Prabhupada has given us everything, Everything that we need to become a pure devotee, like the Dura or Vasudev, <clears throat> to become pure in one lifetime, to become a pure devotee in one lifetime is possible. Srila Prabhupada said, you know, impossible is a word in a fool's dictionary. When the devotees were, when Prabhupada was pushing the devotees to print the Chaitanya Charamrita in like 17 days, 
And the devotees were saying, Prabhupada, that's impossible. We think that's impossible. Prabhupada turned around, stamped his cane in the sand, they were walking on the beach, said, impossible is a word in a fool's dictionary. <clears throat> so we can be, like Prabhupada says, you can be Krishna conscious and develop all the good qualities in, in a moment, or you may not achieve Krishna consciousness in, in millions of lifetimes. It's only a matter of accepting and understanding and applying this process in our life, then the, that possibility is there to achieve the perfection of life. And if we don't follow these teachings, what's the result? Krishna says, he who discards the scriptural injunctions and acts according to his own whims attains neither perfection, nor happiness, nor the supreme destination. Not possible to be happy or to achieve the perfection of life, Krishna conscious, or to go back home, back to the spiritual world. But if we follow these uh, teachings down the line, not that we think, oh, well, I like those bits, but I don't like those bits. Prabhupada said, this is the half-hand philosophy. Now, if you, you want the golden egg from the chook, you think, you know, well, I don't want the botheration of feeding the chook, I just want the golden egg. How are you going to get the golden egg if you don't feed the hen? So, similarly with, with all the different parts of... Uh, these transcendental literatures, so many valuable instructions for all of us, and uh, so many amazing pastimes, and the, all the different facets of the process that Chilapra has given us. We may think, well, I don't like certain parts. Well, I like certain parts. No, we should. We have to accept all the different parts of Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> Every, like Prabhupada said, every word, every, every line, every page, every word, every line in these transcendental literatures is uh, full of transcendental meaning because it's all connected with Krishna and his pure devotees. So it all has immense benefit. Even if you read one word, one line, you can perfect your life. You can become fully Krishna conscious. Even just by clapping your hands in front of the deities, all the reactions to your karmic activities for millions of lives can go away. Even by taking one mouthful of prasadam, you purify it of unlimited sinful activities. Or chanting Hare Krishna once, sincerely. Sankecham parayasam vastobam helanam evava vaikuntanam agrahanam ashishagam haram vadu. In the sixth canto in relationship to Arjamil, it states that uh, even if one chants Hare Krishna like jokingly or neglectfully or derisively or for musical entertainment, one is freed from unlimited sinful reactions. What to speak if we chant Hare Krishna purely and, and attentively hear these messages and very attentively render service uh, sincerely and with a pure heart to Krishna and Guru? How much unlimited benefit is there? So hearing about these wonderful examples of these uh, highly exalted personalities in the Bhagavatam is very inspiring. This sh we should be thinking, how can I become fully engaged in Krishna, Krishna's service like Vidura, like Vasudev, like so many other personalities, Uddhava, Arjuna, Yudhisthira, so many other personalities mentioned here. We should always be hearing about them so we can uh, think that I somehow or other I have to come to the platform where I'm fully engaged in Krishna's service. I'm always glorifying Krishna, I'm always serving Krishna, I'm always trying to give Krishna consciousness to others. <clears throat> and the, the main, of course the main ingredient is love and devotion. Krishna says, Patram Pusmam Palam Toyam, that even if you offer me with love and devotion, a leaf, flower, fruit or water, I will accept it. So it's not what we're offering, what we're giving to Krishna, but with the love and devotion. We can do so much service, but if it's not tinged with this love and devotion, of course it will still have immense benefit. But just imagine how much more benefit is there if we do everything with love and devotion in our service. Krishna says, Bhakti mam abhijanati yavan yas tasmi tat vata, tatomam tat vato gyadva, 
Vishite Tad Anantaram. Um, he says that one can understand me as I am, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, only by devotional service. <laughs> and when one is in such consciousness, by such devotion, he can enter into the Kingdom of God. So this is our whole process, is devotional service. Devotional service means doing everything with love for Krishna. Bhakti is the name, surrender is the game. So bhakti is the, you know, that's the whole object of all our, 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 our life, our whole life for a devotee. is this bhakti, this love and devotion for Krishna and Guru. And that love and devotion for Guru and Krishna spills out into love to all the devotees and living entities in general. <clears throat> and surrender. Surrender is our game. We have to just surrender. Like, like Bali Maharaj is the perfect example, surrendering everything to Krishna. Or Maharaj Ambarish, another great example. Savai mana krishna patara vindiyo vai chamsa vai kutu gunana vana That he always engaged his words in glorifying Krishna, his tongue in chanting Hare Krishna, his ears in hearing the pastimes of the Lord, his eyes in seeing the deity form of the Lord, his nose in smelling the flowers and incense offered to Krishna. His tongue in tasting prasadam, his legs in walking to the temple of the Lord, sense of touch and touching the bodies of the devotees. So this way, Srila Prabhupada has also given us this process in which 24 hours a day we can always engage our senses fully in the service of Krishna. Dovetail our senses. Ordinarily in the material world our senses are unrestricted, uncontrolled. We're not trained to control our mind and senses. Therefore, our senses are like the, the wild horses, as the picture shows in the Bhagavad Gita, just going all over the place, just latching on to this type of enjoyment, that type of enjoyment, but we're never satisfied. But as Prabhupada said, just uh, dovetail your senses instead of in the service of the illusory energy, dovetail your senses in the service of Krishna. And we see that we have opportunity 24 hours away a day to engage all our senses in Krishna's service. Srila Prabhupada set up this program so that we can always think of Krishna. We can, we can come to this platform where we're always thinking of Krishna, never forgetting Krishna. Okay, so does anyone have any questions? I'll just read the verse again. Please tell me whether the best friend of the Kuru is our brother-in-law Vasudeva is doing well. He is very munificent, he is like a father to his sisters, and he is always pleasing to his wives. Any corrections or comments, questions? Do we have a microphone? Yep. Marish, anything? Any ladies have any questions? Okay, just then we'll finish there. Shima Bhagavatam Ki, Shalapapa Ki, Go Premanandi.